from the Up Close to Personal Witcher Boy thesis. Now, real quick, we have got the .mod.aio. Now, listen, the reason why all these other devices are out in front is because I felt a little bit old school with this specific device because I've been blown away with something that I think should have happened a long time ago. And the reason why I've got all this other stuff out is because I've been kicking it on an old school MTL status lately, and I haven't felt like anyone's really hit the nose, or excuse me, hit the nail on the head in terms of MTL, except for maybe the past few months. And that would be starting with the K Fun, and then it'll be going to the X Promiser, which that review will be done shortly. And then this bad bitch right here. Now, this is the dot mod dot AIO. I've got the billet box out sitting right here. This is from my boy Justino. With that said, I kind of wanted to compare the two in terms of similarities because they're calling this a billet box killer, but I don't think that that's accurate. With that said, my ninja kitties, fuck the small talk. Let's go and actually dive into it. Mm. So, dot mod, if you're not aware, used to be an American company as far as I understand. However, they kind of separated ways with the original owner. And what ended up by happening is a lot of people got a sour taste in the mouth from dot mod. In other words, after they separated, they continued to charge American prices for Chinese made products. Here's the deal with dot mod is dot mod has genuinely kept a lot of their quality. I don't necessarily care where the country came from as long as the quality is amazing. And that's just the truth. Dot mod, this product, this product is fucking amazing. Regardless of how their past is in terms of moral situations, I understand people's negative predisposition and not wanting to purchase their products. I'm just going to, and I did because of this is my job. This is a 35 watt device, a single 18650 dual button. This is one I actually didn't find out even existed until like 12 hours into using it. Now with that said, I have been blown away with the performance of this device. And the reason why that's been the most surprising to me personally is because of the fact that it's Nautilus BVC coil compatible. Usually when I see that, I'm like, okay, so I overpaid by 50, 60 bucks for something that's basically a Nautilus. And the truth of the matter is that's not the case because the proprietary coils are fucking amazing. With that said, let's go and check out and see what we got in the box. First, we've got that beautiful dot mod logo right there, black and gold, kind of the shtick. Look in the back, Schwega lumps, components, dot AIO, type C charging cable, so on and so forth. You do get two coils with this. I'm glad that they do include that. There will be an RBA section as far as I understand. It's not necessarily available at the time of the recording of this video. I've seen a couple of them out there. I don't know how they got their hands on it, but on Instagram, it seems like there's got a, there's a few floating around. Again, not sure how they got their hands on it. I kind of want to get my hands on one myself. We've got this beautiful envelope. This is going to reveal the, oh, cute, two dot mod stickers. I didn't even know that existed. It says for advanced users only. I do want to address that for a sec because this, something like the billet box, a lot of these devices that come with RBA decks or that you can purchase RBA decks and that are more modular in terms of purpose or in terms of the way that they're built. I would always suggest to be more for an intermediate to advanced user, but for this instance, I think that this just on its stock form, just from the stock way it comes from the factory, could be used by a beginner or someone that's getting off of cigarettes, especially with the way that the MTL performs. Let's go and pop that in there. This, of course, is going to be a certifi certificate of authenticity, 0779 serial number. Of course, that matches here. Pop this back in with those cute little stickers. This one will not be given away. Simple truth of the matter is, this one has genuinely changed the way I look at all-in-one systems. This is the best all-in-one system I've ever personally used. That includes something like the Breeze, the Breeze 2, uh, the Nautilus AIO. Uh, that includes the UL World. That includes the AugVape AIO, which was, again, one of my favorite AIOs back in the day. Not even back in the day. It was just a couple of months ago. You do get a flat ribbon style C coil and my favorite part about that as you guys know I'm big gaudy I love the fact that that dot mod logo is included. It even matches on the gold USB symbol right there. Right here is your extra spares part kit. And this is something that was kind of cool. I did not realize that it came with extra shit like this. The extra drip tip, it's the Dalrainer Ultim, excuse me, drip tip. This is a two millimeter bore right here at the top. Of course, it does expand at the bottom. I do think if you're gonna make a two millimeter bore, it should stay two millimeters the whole way through. Again, just my preference. I feel like it gives a better draw. With that said, this is for the MTL. You don't need this to achieve a good MTL. Now, this is kind of where my, my qualms come with this device in terms of using the MTL coil. This is the MTL coil. If you are someone who loves MTL, don't bother. You're not gonna need this, and it also limits the power capabilities. It doesn't go all the way to 35 watts. The super strong or the very strong setting with the MTL coil is not strong enough. This one, however, the one that's pre-installed, the mesh version is fucking, listen, I am head over heels for the coil that came installed with this box mod. We've got that gold extender. This is gonna be for your Nautilus coils, the BVC coils, all your extra O-rings, all that kind of good stuff. This video is brought to you by podjuice55.com, coupon code thesis15. This is my personal favorite salt liquid company. Jewel Mint is my personal favorite flavor. With that said, don't forget to hit that coupon code thesis15 for 15% off, ring right there. Now I say that to say this, when I was about to use this device, I was actually a little bit upset. I did order it from vapordna.com. They're not a sponsor of the channel. That's just where 
where I tend to purchase my devices. Yes, the prices are sometimes a little bit higher, but I tend to have some of the best customer satisfaction I've ever had with any company, vape related or not, through Vapor DNA. With that said, this did come open. This was not sealed in the box, and this had fingerprints, not all over it. It wasn't excessive, but it did have fingerprints. And when you're talking about a device that touches your lips, that goes into your mouth, that kind of worries me. It makes me a little bit weirded out by it. And then there was a little bit of gum, not gum like chewing gum, but like a gummy substance on the base of the device when I was going to open it up like this. I noticed it sitting right here, which does, you know, again, freak me the fuck out because I'm putting my mouth on this. So I did take it. I made sure that the, the tank was completely empty. There was no liquid in it, no residue. So I cleaned it out with some alcohol and everything was good to go. Vapor DNA did say that they would be willing to send a new product if I were to send this one back. But honestly, I just want to get the video out. So what I did was I literally just take it as is like I do with all devices. I popped out the reservoir. I took a look at the inside. I took a look at the actual tank. I took a look at the way that it was filled. Of course, it's gonna be a little rubber grommet, all that kind of good stuff. I did realize as I was messing with it, that this is kind of a bitch to adjust right here, even with liquid on it, which I like. That's not a complaint. I like to keep it tiny, just like that. So look to the other side. It's got dual airflow on either side. Now this coil that's already pre-installed is the 0.6 and the airflow on either side is six millimeters by two millimeters. It's a decent size, especially if you're looking to get a decent direct to lung. Here's the deal though. Everyone is going to be talking about the direct to lung capability of this coil and everyone's going to be comparing it with MTLs or the MTL coil. The thing here is this, you don't need the, the MTL coil. You do not need the MTL coil to get a perfect MTL. And I say that also because I actually got less flavor from the MTL coil. And that's something I was a little bit disappointed by because of how good this coil is. Now let's back off the airflow and talk about the coil for a sec. This is the 0.3 ohm mesh coil that it comes pre-installed. This is not something I expected. In fact, it's something that I kind of, uh, I wasn't looking forward to necessarily with this mesh coil. In my head, I thought I was going to waste a shit ton of my liquid, my favorite juice, stick it in there and I wasn't going to enjoy it and it was going to be too airy. I thought it was going to end up by being something like the Orion or the Orchid. I close the the airflow off until you almost couldn't see it. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. You'll see how small that hole actually is. See that? right there and then of course right there what i expected was a shit ton of leaking and i expected for me to get a bunch of gurgles after a couple of minutes neither of which happened i was getting some of the best flavor i've ever gotten out of any all-in-one system ever i didn't expect it to last and i hate sounding like i'm dogging on a company before i even use the product but i just didn't expect that i had the regular gold 510 pin or excuse me regular gold 510 drip tip sitting atop it i popped this back in and i just kept going once i saw the adjustment button i realized it was round robin i said holy shit this whole time i've been vaping on soft or very soft even with the direct to lung coil. So from the very soft setting, I brought it to the soft setting. I took a hit and I was fucking blown away. Hit the button one more time, full power. This is stainless steel and it does have temp control or basically overheat protection for that coil to save your coil in the instance of dry firing. So with that said, let's go and take a puff. That is an overwhelming amount of flavor, especially at full power. Here's the biggest downfall with this device overall with me using it. I would not necessarily recommend this device for the simple fact of the price tag. It's a hundred dollar device. And for me, that's way too much fucking money for an all in one system. Now, again, they do plan on coming out with things like RBA. So like a rebuildable deck. And of course they're going to offer different options like modular panels and things like that, which is great. I think that's a great option. Here's the deal though, is they're kind of comparing themselves and they've even used the, their own word, a billet box killer at the end of the day the billet box is basically a religion for a lot of vapors and i almost mean that in a not joking manner so like if you check out any type of billet box group on facebook they modify these things to the point where it's no longer recognizable as a billet box other than its square platform with that said you can spend upwards of 800 dollars on a single billet box i've seen it before and i'm sure it'll see it again so for a hundred dollars am i getting a similar experience that i've tried on different people's billet boxes the answer is no because the billet boxes i've tried have ranged all the way from mtl all the way to DLs and somewhere in between and the options are basically endless. You are much more limited with this specific setup for the time being. Again, again, do I think this is the best performing all in one that I've used? Absolutely, no question about it. But at the same time, when you're comparing this to something like uh, the AugVape All-in-One, AugVape AIO or the UL Whirl, they're pretty similar in terms of the way that they vape. The only difference is I'm getting more flavor from this with more options. And that's something that I think is worth it. But the $100 price tag does does kind of throw me off 158 grams let's see something to compare it to let's go and grab something people are familiar with here is an orion with liquid in it 87 so about double an orion pod system with that said this is rocking 18650 so the battery is going to last virtually all day especially at the lower power range it's big enough to let you know that it's got good quality components it's 23 or just close enough 23 millimeters thick and it is 
let's see, 78 millimeters long and then 45 millimeters wide. Definitely not a tiny device, especially compared to something like the Orion that's gonna be a lot thinner. Now this is a 510 drip tip, but it does not fit all 510s. I've tried a lot of different 510s in this specific device and it's not necessarily compatible with all of them. In fact, this one seems to be a little bit smaller than most and I'm curious on whether or not they did that on purpose. Back to the other drip tip that's in here. It does come with this Ultim or Delrin looking drip tip right here. Let me see, bam, which is a lot smaller and is gonna aid quote unquote in MTL. But I'll tell you the truth, once you bring that airflow all the way down, it doesn't get much better. It is a perfect MTL even with this drip tip once that airflow is completely closed off or basically closed off. Plus, I'm not a huge fan of how thin this feels in the mouth. I'm not a huge fan of the way it looks. I love that gold on gold. Even with that drip tip, it is still so fucking flavorful. I've had it for what, going on six days, seven days with this specific device, using it every single day, nonstop. Now, a couple of the features I wasn't a huge fan of, the button is not easy to feel. It just basically feels like it's a part of the rest of the device. If you didn't know any better, it would just feel like a little bit of a, a scratch that you had, maybe dropped it on some cement and got a little bit of a divot. That's exactly how it feels. So you just always have to remember that the button is on the same side as the drip tip. It's also the same side as the window for the tank. Now the window is semi-useless. You can never really see the liquid that's inside of there even when the light is kind of shining on it. So you've got to take this off to check how much liquid you have left. And then right here is also used as not only a window for your uh, reservoir, but it's also used as the airflow inlet. These panels are nice, although I do not like the fact that they stick out further than the rest of the body or the rest of the chassis. The reason why is because when you drop it, it is going to dislodge each battery door and it's going to pop off. I've had it dropped a couple of times. Wasn't a big deal, but yes, the battery doors did completely fly off. Not a huge deal. Don't drop it. It's not super heavy, but it's also not something I want to drop on a continuous basis. Right here again, it is round robin. This is your adjustment button. It's a single button system, which I like a lot. One, two, three, four, and then back down to very soft. Put it back right there in the middle, and that's about perfect where I keep it. The other thing to note is that it does adjust depending upon the coil that you put in there. So if you put a 1.6 or a 1.8 ohm coil, it is going to adjust a little bit lower wattage. I do prefer the 0.3 ohm mesh coil, like I was saying earlier, and I do think it's well worth the investment to try that RBA section. The reservoir itself is 2.7 milliliters, which is a perfect size. It will last all day. It depends, again, on your wattage range that you're vaping at. If you're vaping at maximum wattage on the the 0.3 with uh, direct to lung, it's probably only going to last a few hours. But with that said, I'm rocking 55 milligram salts in an MTL platform. So again, with that said, for me, that's like 8 to 12 hours easily all day long. Low battery indicator, of course, the LED does go from green to blue to red, and then red is 20% and under. Now, it is USB-C compatible, uh, which is fine and dandy. I don't necessarily recommend charging it like that on a regular basis, but it's nice to know that you have that option if you want to charge it in your vehicle, for example, when you're on a road trip or anything along those lines. Bitch, it's okay, some of the truck is now. With that being said, let's go and get back to regular view, son. Mm. The final summation is this. The .mod.aio is not necessarily a billet bod replacement. Billet bod, motherfucker. Billet box replacement. However, if you want to get into that lane, if you like the way a billet box looks, performs, and kind of feels, this is going to be a, a perfect accompaniment to someone who loves that billet box form. The box itself, the feeling of the box is beautiful. It is aluminum. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's lightweight. I know in the up close person, I was saying that it was a little bit heavier. It's really not. Like you don't notice how heavy it is because of its size. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous and minimalistic box mod to kind of look at, to stare at, you kind of admire it, especially with that gold drip tip. Plus I like gold, I think gold looks nice. But with that said, this mod almost was nervous about recording this video because it sounds like I'm working for fucking Dot Mod. I'm not a huge fan of Dot Mod only because of what they've done in the past, here's the deal. Any company could have made this device, Smock could have made this device, and if it was this good, like I would still have no problems telling you how good this device is. Listen to the MTL status on this. damn near silent. Here's one of the things I forgot to mention in the up close is a couple of the downsides with this reservoir is that it does not stay put. Like it doesn't stay exactly perfect and aligned. When it comes, watch this. So if I go like that just a little bit, the reservoir actually peaks out like maybe a quarter or a half a millimeter, which doesn't seem like much, but it's just enough to throw the airflow off. I get a much looser draw when that happens. Yup, you can almost hear it, listen. And then once I put it back in place, just like that. I don't even know if you guys could see that, but I could feel it pop back into place. You're gonna hear the difference. My fingers are not covering the airflow. Much longer, much tighter MTL. So with that aside, it's one of those things where it's like the fucking, the, the platform itself, I thought was an overused and overdone platform. As soon as I saw that it used Nautilus coils, I'm like, why would anyone pay $100 to get a Nautilus experience? At the end of the day, fuck the Nautilus coils. Purchase the proprietary ones. I can't believe I'm saying that shit because they charge so much more. I remember when the Atlantis coils were being used in the, in the dot mod, I forget, the Petri, the dot mod Petri sub -ohm tank. I think that's what it was. Don't quote me on that. I couldn't believe I paid 60 bucks for basically an Atlantis, something that was even tighter than Atlantis. But the truth of the matter is, 
is their proprietary coils, Dot Mods coils, are better than the Nautilus coils. The 0 0.30 mesh, it's giving me the best all-in-one experience I've ever had in terms of flavor. The MTL status on this is so unexpected. I just shut the airflow to the point where I can't even see through the, yeah, I can't even see through the hole. Let's go and see what happens. The way that you place it back in, bottom first, top clicks in, pop that in. Mm. It makes me smile. If a mod can do that shit in terms of performance and the way that it looks, you've got a winning combination. That's it, end of sentence, period. Living with it from day to day does get frustrating because of the button. If you don't always have keep track of where that button is with your thumb, you're gonna lose it, or at least I have, and it's kind of been an issue, um, especially I have had to stop and look at it, fucking, okay, there's the button, then I'll take a hit. Another thing is you will cover this hole up. This is the airflow hole. I wish it was in a different spot. I'm not mad at it. It's not a bad deal, or it's not a big deal. It's just one of those things where like, once you get used to the idea of knowing where that button is the drip dip is and the airflow is all on the same side which i'm glad that they did then you're used to not covering it up if you cover it up you want an even tighter mtl be my guest you can do so but again but again that's why they include that second drip tip i'm not a huge fan of the way it looks i think the gold one the stock one that it comes with is absolutely gorgeous in my opinion i'm going to go ahead and cover up this airflow see if you can even hear it god damn it is so smooth i'm on the second setting so it's not even halfway up in terms of wattage mm. Very little leakage. There is a bit, especially when you're going to, you know, in and out in terms of the way that it's filled. I'm not a fan of the grommet system, but I couldn't necessarily think of a different way to fill this up. I think the grommet system is kind of, it just works for this platform. It works, it works for this reservoir. It does leak a little bit, not leak, but when you're done filling it up, it's going to get some residue, some, some liquid on that grommet. When you shut it, it's going to be on your fingers a little bit like that. It's easy to live with. As soon as you realize the performance of this device, it's one of those things where you're not going to, you're not mad at it. You're just not. A lot of these little things, these nitpicky things are overlooked or can be overlooked if you feel the performance of this device and i'm gonna stand by that i'm telling you right now in my opinion this is the best all-in-one i've ever tried that includes my favorites like the ul world that includes my favorites like the all-in-one aug vape that includes my favorite it just goes on the Nautilus aio the breeze one breeze two this is the best all-in-one system hold on would i consider this an all-in-one though because you have a reservoir you can change reservoirs if you want to buy a second one that's actually a good question i want you guys that's gonna be the comment question comment below on whether or not you think this is actually an all-in-one system if you think it is go in comment below this is an all-in-one if you don't comment that shit, it's not an all in one because it's got a replaceable tank. Bitches, that's a great question, motherfuckers. Hawkeyes, okay, mother liquors, now on thesis patented finger of capability scale. Hmm, I struggle with this one. I struggle with this one. This only pertains to all in ones, right? This is going to be a 9.5. It's creeping up on a 9.7. It's almost fucking perfect. The button annoys me. The fact that a cover up the airflow can be annoying at times. It just, you know, when you go to take a hit, sometimes you don't expect it to be that tight. But then when you do and you realize that you're doing it, it can be done on purpose to actually aid in the performance. The other part is I don't like the wiggliness of the reservoir. If I drop it on this side, it comes out just a bit and making it a little bit more airy. Those are just little nitpicky shits. If you don't have a problem with those things, it's not gonna be a big deal. I don't like that the doors stick out more than the body or the chassis, but again, real fucking nitpicky. Bitch, it's okay, some other truckers. Now with that said, I wanna give a big shout out to the Patreon page. Thank you guys so much. Hit me up on patreon.com slash these himself as well as all social media at these himself hit that subscribe button and notification bell motherfuckers bitches now with that being said i want to tell y'all that i appreciate y'all for vaping with thesis it is your boy thesis i'm out mm.